Hey guys, so today I'm reviewing this Elgoo Jupiter. It's a large format resin 3D printer. I was one of the over 5,000 uh, Kickstarter backers back in September of last year. Uh, I should have received this printer sooner than just a couple months ago, but there are some quality issues with the VAT and also some delays due to restrictions in China. So I finally just got it and this will be a review for it. So as you can tell, it's a very large machine with an all-metal structure, unlike the smaller machines that have an acrylic lid that goes on top to block out the UV light. The external dimensions come out to be 19 and a half inches by 14 inches for the base, and then 29 and a half inches tall. With this machine weighing in at 88 pounds, they have these nice, comfortable handles to lift the machine up and move it around with. But I personally found with how rigid the machine is, it's a lot easier to lift it with one hand at the bottom and one hand at the back. On the right side of the machine, we have the USB port, which is positioned as close to the front of the machine as possible and a reasonable height from the base. Further back from that, we have a beefy on-off switch, the power cable, as well as the network port, which I have yet to use. On the front of the machine, we have the 5-inch touchscreen, which is clear to read, and I personally found it very easy to maneuver through the menus, even with larger hands like myself. The standard way to access the inside of the machine is by opening the door from right to left. It also opens 180 degrees, unlike a lot of the pre-release models. It also looks like you could switch the left and right panels so that the door opens the opposite direction. If this is something you'd like me to try to do, let me know in the comments below. Moving on to some of the more important specs, the LCD screen is a 6K 12.8 inch photo screen with a build volume of 277 by 156 millimeters by 300 millimeters tall. The VAT is very well designed with two large metal handles, bolts at the bottom that keep the FEP off any flat surface you put it on, as well as aligning it over the screen. There is also a pour spout on the front right and a max level mark at the back. One of the unique features of the new VAT design is the ability to use these autofill caps which fit directly onto your resin bottle and then lock into place on your VAT. While you're printing and your resin gets low, it'll autofill the vat, preventing large prints from filling halfway through. The only downside is, even though they have provided five of these caps, it only fits on Elgu and similar brand bottles. I have found some of these 3D printable adapters online that you can download and 3D print, but I would highly recommend not using them. As you can see here, before I even get it mounted to the vat, it starts leaking everywhere. For the build plate, they went with a different design for mounting it and leveling it. It mounts with a single large bolt in the center, and the adjustment for leveling is done by these four bolts with captive nuts at the ends. Another thing this printer came with that other earlier releases didn't have is the ability to lock in each of these four bolts with another set of bolts 90 degrees from them. It looks complicated at first glance, but the instructions are simple and clear to follow along with. I actually like this design as when you're trying to remove your models from the plate, you won't accidentally knock it out of level and should only have to do this step once. The build plate holder is attached to four linear rail sliders, two for each rail, increasing the stability preventing the z-axis from leaning forward and nodding while lifting the print off the FEP each layer. The z-axis is controlled by a large high quality ball screw which also has a ball bearing attached to the top. With the combination of the large rails, ball screw, and the four sliders to attach to them, it should hold up well to the demand of printing large models regularly. Some of the built-in accessories the machine has are the lights at the top, which you can toggle on and off with the touchscreen, and a USB port for a mini air filter. While the rest of the machine is built well, I found these two features lacking, as the lights are very dim and you cannot see into the machine without opening the door. As for the built-in air filter, it's nice to have, but I've noticed only after just printing the few prints for this video, the fan inside is already making a horrible sound at startup. Something that would have been nice for the USB port is the ability to power a camera or a mini heater, but currently that's not possible due to the power output isn't high enough for these things at this time. Which brings me to the future possibilities of this machine. Both on Kickstarter and their current webpage, they mention expansion kits and talk about how it's easy to disassemble and upgrade the machine within 30 minutes, with the possibility to increase the Z to 500 millimeters. And something they didn't mention anything about, but I noticed on my machine, is this removable block off plate on the back of the printer next to where the USB port is. So, how well does it print? 
I printed these all with Sriatec Fast Gray and started with the Rook that came on the USB drive. It turned out well except for the drooping at the top part of the print that was unsupported. Next I wanted to utilize the full print volume and printed this full face mask in one go taking just over 15 hours. For large prints like this I recommend getting at least one of these silicone mats to remove the print from the build plate to prevent getting uncured resin all over your work area. The mask turned out great and fits nicely. Now I wanted to see how well it handled small detailed prints, so I printed this small Pikachu Kakashi. As you can see, it turned out very nice without seeing any visible printing marks at 0.05 layer height. In conclusion, it's a very rugged design capable of preventing detailed minis to very large prints without the need to break them into multiple parts. With the added potential to upgrade the machine in the future, hopefully saving some money versus having to buy a whole new printer, but even without any upgrades, it seems like a great machine that will last a long time. If you found this review helpful and wanted to help grow my channel, consider liking this video. Thanks for watching.